Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is December 1st, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Coca-Cola helping families get fit? What? Would you like fries with that high fructose syrup? A new study funded by Coca-Cola de-emphasizes diet and shifts to exercise. But they're not drinking Coke at the Paris Climate Summit. It's lifestyles of the rich and devious. Limousine liberals, Obama and Kerry were living it up like the royalty they think they are. It was caviar and cavalier attitudes as they consumed vast quantities of fuel and food. Meanwhile, they preach austerity to the masses. Here in Africa, if everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. Then. A national police union asked the NFL to allow concealed carry in stadiums as a safeguard against terrorism. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. The UN Climate Summit is underway in Paris, France. Now, this is where millionaires and billionaires are going to fly in on their private jets, rent out hotels, and drive around in uh, catered vehicles and cost you, the taxpayer, hundreds of thousands of dollars. One person in particular, the President Barack Obama. And the Washington Free Beacon has the estimate for Obama's motorcade alone at $784,825. And of course, this includes car service, hotels, and accommodations that are going to cost the American taxpayer nearly two million. Excuse me, I said hundreds of thousands. It's two two million dollars, according to government contracts. The meeting of global leaders, which President Obama has said is a powerful rebuke to terrorists, began on Monday. Now let's take a pause right there. A pause for the cause, because I remember. You know, I'm not a big you know Bernie Sanders uh, critic or fan or anything like that. I really don't follow too much of what he does, to be quite honest with you. But when I saw this quote, when he was saying that. Uh, climate change directly impacted uh, global terrorism, that ISIS is, you know, out there chopping people's heads off supposedly because of climate change. It was one of the most ridiculous things I had ever heard, and now it's being pretty much echoed by the current president of the United States. So it very concerns me that Sanders may be the next president of the United States if he thinks climate change is what's driving people to chop people's heads off. It's uh, pretty pretty damn ridiculous. Representatives from 195 countries traveled to Paris burning 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide for the United Nations conference that seeks to reduce global emissions. And the tab for uh, Obama's motorcade, as we already said, is nearly $800,000. Secretary of State John Kerry's car service totaled uh, $76,000. And it just goes on from there. They got breakdowns from many different politicians and uh, people in these uh, global leading positions, all telling you that you need to live within your means. Uh, whether you're here in the United States of America or whether you're abroad, you got guys like Al Gore who has, I believe, a former estimate said he had three homes. One of them was on the ocean. Does that really seem like he's that concerned about rising ocean tides? It doesn't sound like that to me. And as we're talking about Obama, I love playing this clip because I try to tell it to people and they just can't grasp it. So here's a clip of the current president of the United States going to Africa, well, I've never been, but they make it look really hot on the History Channel. And he tells people in Africa that you should not have air conditioning because the planet is going to boil over. Africa, we're gonna all have to work together to find ways in which collectively we reduce carbon, but we make sure that there's some differentiation so that 
countries that are very wealthy uh, are expected to do more, and countries that are still developing, you know, obviously they shouldn't be resigned to poverty simply because, uh, you know, the West and Europe and, and America got there first. That wouldn't be fair. But everybody's going to have to do something. Everybody's going to have to make some important choices here. And, you know, I expect that it's going to be your generation that helps lead this because if we don't, it's going to be your generation uh, that suffers the most. Uh, ultimately, if you think about all the youth that everybody's mentioned here in Africa, if everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. And right after he said that, he got back into his convoy, jumped back onto his private jet, and went back to his private mega mansion. But, you know, it doesn't matter because you need to live within your means. Now, as we're talking about uh, the Syrian situation and a lot of people coming here to the United States and going to other places as well, a lot of people are concerned, you know, what are the religious affiliations of people? And personally, I'm not one of those people saying discriminate against people because they're Muslim or because they're from Syria, Pakistan, or Yemen, or any of that. But I'm just bringing up the point with this article we have now that no Christians are being admitted into the United States coming from these uh, Syrian areas. And we do know that Syrians are being attacked, excuse me, uh, Christians are being attacked in these areas. You've seen the videos uh, numerous times. They're going to Christian villages. They're burning down churches. Uh, they're uh, urinating on crosses of Jesus. You can find all these articles out there ripping out people's vital organs and all the things to that nature. And this information is according to the data from the State Department Refugees Processing Center. So we know uh, the people that are coming in here have not been Christians. Once again, I'm not saying screen people because of their religions. I think somebody from Syria goes under the same process as somebody from uh, Greenland or, you know, some other place. You know, you don't discriminate just because they're from a particular area, but you do have the same vetting process for everybody. But, of course, they're not letting Christians in for whatever reason. Now, as we're talking about foreign violence with groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, let's talk about some domestic violence. Now, recently we had the shooting at Planned Parenthood, which I do not endorse at all. They try to say that if you're a right-wing guy, which I guess I've been labeled, I'm not a Republican at all, but uh, that's what they try to say that you are. And they say that you're happy that this thing happened. I'm not telling anybody to go out to a Planned Parenthood or any other facility and shoot up the place. But they're trying very hard to say that this guy is, you know, a right-wing nut job. You know, he was concerned about baby parts and all this stuff, which I'm concerned about baby parts too, but I'm not going out there and killing people. And now Senator Ted Cruz is saying that the overwhelming of majority of violence is committed by Democrats. In speaking to the recent shooting at a Colorado Planned Parenthood clinic, and he made these comments during a recent media appearance. You know, every time you have some sort of uh, violent crime or mass killing, you can almost see the media salivating, hoping, hoping desperately that the murderer happens to be a Republican so they can use it to try to paint their political enemies. Now, listen, here's the simple and undeniable fact. The overwhelming majority of violent criminals are Democrats. The media doesn't report that. Now, we have some news out of my hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm not sure if this guy was a Democrat, but he did go out looking for some trouble, and he definitely found it. And police say that a would-be robber went to a Burger King in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He pulled out a crowbar on a gentleman outside. The guy pulled out his own firearm and shot the bad guy, reports WFTV News. And the perpetrator drove himself to the hospital. And this said this is a self-defense shooting, and it's a continuing trend for Tulsa that has had several shootings in self-defense this year. And that's why I love being from Tulsa, Oklahoma, because people defend themselves. Uh, I remember a report earlier this year, a guy... Uh, he lived at home by himself, and he, I guess the bad guys thought he was an easy target, you know, an older gentleman, and they break into the guy's house, he pulls out his gun, and he shoots him. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to defend yourself. Just like the 12-year-old girl in Oklahoma, I believe it's back in 2012. She wasn't in Tulsa, but uh, she was home alone. Some guy broke into her house. She goes into the closet or into the bathroom. The guy comes and jiggles the door handle, shoots through the door, shoots the guy, and the girl is alive and well today. You know, the guy got his hand on the girl. He may have killed her, may have tried to rape her, any number of other things. But they don't want to let you know about people using a gun in self-defense. They just want to tell you about crazy guys like this Planned Parenthood guy. Meanwhile, there are plenty of examples of legitimate 
self-defense. You know, okay, what are these examples? I'm so glad you asked. There was a young man in Houston. I believe he was 15 years old. This is a couple years ago. I'm just going off the top of my head. They don't have these articles pulled up. And uh, two guys tried to break into his back door. He had his AR-15, his dad's AR-15. He got the gun, shot the bad guys, and he's alive and well today, as is his sister, who was also home at the time. But like I said, they don't want to tell you about people using guns in self-defense. That brings up another thing I've been thinking about recently. Uh, you know, I meet all these people, and they say, well, how can you justify gun ownership when you see all these bad things happen with guns? Because I understand that if a person drives drunk, he T-bones a minivan and kills the four occupants inside, that's a local news story. But if a guy uses a gun and shoots four people, that's a national news story. Why, how do you have that disparity? Four people are dead. You have a person who acted either negligent, negligently or with malintent, and you have the same result, but people don't want to talk about it. Because it's easy to ban something that you don't own or an activity that you don't participate in. If you don't have a gun, you don't have any issue trying to ban guns. But if you hear that example about the uh, family who drive died from the drunk driver, you'll say, well, that was that individual. That doesn't have to do with anything that I do. I have a glass of wine at the house, have a, uh, a beer while I'm watching the game, and it's a fun time, it's a safe time. There's nothing wrong with that. I do agree, there is nothing wrong with that, but by that same token, my guns are locked up in a safe in my apartment. It's me and my dog, and to my dog, it's just a big metal stick that's not fun to chew on, so I'm not anticipating her going out and having any type of uh, mass shooting incident, but I uh, got sidetracked. Let me get back to uh, my articles here. Now, as we're talking about firearms, we're talking about firearms with police, and now Rahm Emanuel, the Don of Chicago, is saying that it's time to get rid of the police chief because of the recent shooting where a young man was shot 16 times. It definitely does seem to be excessive, in my personal opinion. But now Rahm is pretty much uh, fleeing the ship. He's getting rid of the police chief. And honestly, I think Rahm is more concerned about self-preservation than anything else because he also knows that people are coming for him. They want his head on the pike, just like they want the police chiefs. So he's saying, hey, you can have this guy, just leave me alone. Because of course we know Rahm Emanuel, the guy who said, don't let a good crisis go to waste. A guy who is very proud of having an unarmed city in Chicago, uh, wants more pe people to be unarmed in cities like that. I honestly think he's just trying to save himself. But it's not to say all police are bad. There are plenty of good police officers out there and they want to be armed at all times, just like many citizens do. And now people are saying that, hey, we want to be armed or have the ability to carry concealed carry when we go someplace like a football game. And now police unions are saying to the NFL, please let us carry our firearms in these stadiums, not only for our own personal security, but to prevent a tragedy like what may happen uh, in a Paris type situation. They're saying that we want the right to uh, carry in the sports stadiums. Now, other people are saying that we don't want anybody to be carrying because you may have a clash with security, even if you have the best of intentions. If you pull out a firearm, our security personnel may converge on you and an uh, incident may uh, spark up from there. So uh, I think it's worth considering. I definitely don't want TSA style pat downs at the uh, games, but then you can't have the ability to defend yourself. We're going to end with this before we go on to a special report from the ISIS hunter Joe Biggs himself talking about obes obesity and its ties to Coca-Cola. Basically, you guys remember earlier this year, they had a study come out say, Coke is good for you. It's great. It's all these other things. And you find out that Coca-Cola actually funded the group that, you know, said it's not making you fat when you drink Coke all day long. <laughs> it's completely ridiculous. Now, let's go into a special report from Joe Biggs before we come back after this break with other special reports from the InfoWars crew. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, we are on our first leg of a North American tour exposing the caliphate that has happened here in America. Now, we have a number of locations throughout the country that breeds radical Islam, that encourages it, that will even pay for people to go over to seas, to train, to become radicalized, and then fight troops overseas to come back to America and carry out attacks. Now, one of the largest stories in the country right now is whether or not we, as, an, as a country, as America, should allow Syrian refugees in mass numbers to be brought over in hopes that they'll assimilate, that they'll become American through and through. Now, our government has openly come out and said that they have supported Al-Qaeda, that they have given them arms, that they have trained them. And now we have a president who is openly supporting ISIS. He won't even call them what they are, which is radical.